Hello everyone. I am Dr. M.A. Miri, Assistant Professor, Department of English, St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science Autonomous, Kadalur. Now we are going to see the poem, The Meadow Mouse, written by Theodore Hubner Ratke. So he is an American writer. He was born in 1908 and he died in 1963. Let's see about the author first. Theodore Ratke was the greatest American poet and the most influential poets of his generation. His works are characterized by self-observation, rhythm and natural imagery. He taught poetry at the University of Washington for 15 years. He was probably the best poetry writing teacher ever, says poet Richard Hugo. Some of his notable works are The Waking, the Lost Sun, The Far Field, and Words of Words for the Wind. So in this image we see a small mouse in the palm. This poem, The Meadow Mouse, narrates the poet's process of how he finds some baby mouse in a meadow and how he nurtures it as though it was his pet until it suddenly disappears leaving him confused let us see the poem the meadow mouse in a shoe box stuffed in an old nylon stocking sleeps the baby mouse i found in the meadow so the speaker finds a baby mouse in the meadow which was found trembling and shaking under a stick. That's the third line we see that where he trembled and shook beneath the stick till I caught him up by the tail and brought him in cradled in my hand a little quacker the whole body of him trembling. So in these lines what we understand is the speaker finds a baby mouse in the meadow which was found trembling and shaking under the stick. He picks him up carefully, brings him home, cradling in his hand. Then the next slide says like this or the poem goes like this. His absurd whiskers sticking out like a cartoon mouse, his feet like small leaves, little lizard feet, whitish and spread wide when he tried to struggle away, wriggling like a minuscule puppy. In these lines we understand that the poet wants to describe how the mouse is. Already we have seen that it has been trembling like a quacker and then he has a close observation of the mouse. His whiskers are projecting out and he resembles a cartoon mouse. Then he observes his tiny feet which, like, which look like those of a lizard. So here he is making a comparison. His feet are like those of a lizard. And they are very tender since it is a baby mouse. The feet are tender and transparent like small leaves. Those white feet spread wide when he tried to struggle away, twisting and turning like a baby puppy. In the next slide we see that. Now... He has eaten his three kinds of cheese and drunk from his bottle cap watering trough. 
so the speaker feels feeds him with three kinds of cheese and makes him drink water from a bottle cap salty he has kept the mouse in a shoe box which is stuffed with an old nylon stocking but now he is feeding the mouse with all kinds of cheese he has that is three kinds of cheese and he also makes him drink water from a bottle cap so much he just lies in one corner his tail curled under him his belly big the little mouse curls up like a baby in one corner of the box and then afterwards his belly is also big because it has been fed enough so its belly is big as his head and his bat like ears twitching tilting toward the least sound so the little mouse is uh, curling up like a baby in one corner of the box and starts sleeping peacefully his tail is curled under his big belly his bat like ears are twitching and turning to listen to the least sound heard the next one the poet says like this do i imagine he no longer trembles when i come close to him he seems no longer to tremble these lines say what the what the speaker thinks about the small mouse he imagines that or uh, uh, he feels the speaker feels that or he assumes that he has offered sufficient protection and comfort and he feels that the mouse has settled comfortably and is no longer afraid of him so this is his own imagination then he feels also feels that the mouse has developed a better kind of relationship with him and he is sure that the mouse has adapted well in his new home and no longer trembles when the speaker approaches him and let's see what happened after that see the poem lines but this morning the shoe box house on the back porch is empty where has he gone my meadow mouse my thumb of a child that nestled in my palm so now we understand that when in the next morning when the speaker wants to go to see the mouse again he was shocked what's the reason what's the reason the mouse was missing so he finds the box shoe box empty he wonders what has happened to him then he worries about the awaiting dangers to his life in the form of fatal predators like a snake a owl a hawk or a cat so immediately he is worried about he uh, he starts worrying about the um, life of the mouse because it doesn't want to be in the comfortable house instead it has gone in search of its natural place but there his life is under risk because it could be caught by the uh, an old uh, old owl or some or uh, a hawk or even the shake, snake or a tomcat so and the small birds so they will be, they are the predators which feed on the small rodents like this little mouse then in the next slide what the poet feels is or what the speaker feels is i think of the nestling fallen into the deep grass the turtle gasping in the dusty rubble of the highway the paralytic stunned in the tub and the water rising all things innocent helpless forsaken so here 
what the speaker wants to say is the mouse has gone leaving its uh, comfortable place and going in search of its natural home which is a world full of risk so the speaker is terrified when horrifying images of helpless animals come to his mind he thinks about the nestling fallen into the ground and the turtle crossing the busy highway these helpless creatures are compared to the paralytic stuck in a tub who needs the help of others for survival so in this poem the poet empathizes over the helpless creatures which need the mercy of human beings so the summary has been given in the following slides it gives the explanation or what just a paraphrase of what has been said in the poem so let let me repeat it the speaker finds a baby mouse in the meadow who was found trembling and shaking under a stick he picks him up carefully brings him home cradling in his hand he keeps him in a shoe box stuffing it with an old nylon stocking his whole body is trembling like a quaker his whiskers are projecting out and he resembles a cartoon mouse his tiny feet look like those of a lizard they are tender and transparent like small leaves those white feet spread wide when he tried to struggle away twisting and turning like a baby puppy the speaker feeds him with three kinds of cheese and makes him drink water from a bottle cap the little mouse curls up like a baby in one corner of the box and starts sleeping peacefully his tail is curled under his big belly his bat like ears are twitching and turning to listen to the least sound heard since the speaker assumes that he has offered sufficient protection and comfort he feels that the mouse has settled comfortably and is no longer afraid of him so he feels that he has created a bond has been created between himself and that small animal so he imagines that the mouse has developed a better relationship with him he is sure that the mouse has adapted well in his new home and no longer trembles when the speaker approaches him next morning the speaker is shocked to find the shoe box empty he wonders what has happened to that small mouse and immediately he is worried about the awaiting dangers to this tiny creature and the awaiting dangers to his life in the form of fatal predators like a snake and now a hawk or a cat the mouse has gone to his natural home the world which is a uh, uh, which is full of uh, risk so even though he is very comfortable in the shoe box he doesn't like it he wants to go to his natural place even though the place is full of risk and the speaker is terrified when horrifying images of helpless animals come to his mind he thinks about the nestling fallen into the ground and the turtle crossing the busy highway so who is there to help them so it depends upon their own fate only so these helpless creatures they are compared to the paralytic stuck in a tub who needs the help of others for survival so this uh, here the the speaker wants to say that uh, these tiny creatures are helpless and they need definitely need the help of others especially the human beings for their survival so in this poem 
the poet empathizes over the helpless creatures which need the mercy of human beings so by narrating a small uh, happening in his life just taking a meadow mouse in his hand bringing it home feeding it well and placing it in a cozy place even then the mouse is not ready to be with him it wants it goes in search of its natural place so uh, but here he wants to talk about the kindness in human being which is required to save all these helpless tiny creatures this emp- uh, the, the empathy the, the speaker wants to stress the need of empathy in all the human beings to save the tiny creatures like the meadow mouse thank you